it looks like I'm live. Hello and welcome, my name is Pam Fox and um, I have a, a protocol for reversing hiatal hernia naturally at my website. You can go there to learn more. It's at pamfox.org and you just need to scroll down to the very, very bottom of the page and you'll see the link um, to the in more information about my reversing hiatal hernia naturally uh, protocol at the very bottom of the website. So in today's video, I've got a comment here from actually a client who is, um, she is just beginning my protocol and she has contacted me to say that after doing all of the exercises, the solar plexus area feels very anxious, arms feel nervous, and the same area hurts, the solar plexus, which is, the solar plexus, if you don't know, is just here, just below the rib cage. And typically a hiatal hernia is just to the left of that, right below the rib cage. So whenever I uh, stream live, everything is reversed. If I'm pointing to my left and you're thinking, isn't that her right? That's why. Uh, so this particular person is having these symptoms of anxiety, pain, nervousness when she does the exercises that I teach. Um, and so I'm going to address that. I'm also going to be demonstrating um, a couple of the exercises that I teach in this video today. So if you have a hiatal hernia, if you know somebody that has and suffers with a hiatal hernia, make sure you tag them in this video or share it out. Um, what I teach is a very, before I address the question, what I teach is a very um, comprehensive uh, protocol for reversing a hiatal hernia. And so before I address this comment, I just want to give um, a little bit of a recap as to what that means because I know I'm getting new followers every day that are newly diagnosed with hiatal hernia. So the reason I call my protocol a comprehensive protocol is because there are three parts to it. Um, it's not just do these exercises and you'll reverse your hiatal hernia. It's not just, you know, one thing that fixes the problem. It's holistic. It's comprehensive. It's, it's, it's number one, understanding your condition, fully understanding your hiatal hernia, how you got your hiatal hernia, I help you to understand that and um, understand what is supporting your hiatal hernia. So with a healthy stomach, we have something that looks a little bit like this, where your stomach sits below your diaphragm like this. So this is your esophagus going up through the hole in your diaphragm, known as the hiatus, which is right up here. Point a little arrow to it. Um, so your hiatus is the little hole in the diaphragm right up there. And I just want to bring attention to that because um, I oftentimes see the same person in the hiatal hernia support group on Facebook saying, you cannot reverse a hiatal hernia naturally. The only way you can repair a tear in your diaphragm is to have it surgically fixed. And so this person, um, and I've tried to <laughs> courteously and respectfully correct this person, but he has no um, intention of listening or learning. But typically speaking, um, commonly speaking, when it comes to hiatal hernias, this hole right here where your stomach eventually protrudes through and creates a hernia is called the hiatus. It's a hole that's already there in your diaphragm, okay? And so when he talks about the only way you can reverse a hiatal hernia is to have this tear surgically repaired, what he's talking about, and he has had a hiatal hernia surgical repair, what he's talking about is the rare instance where people get a hiatal hernia due to trauma trauma where they've had maybe um, a car accident, they've fallen from off of a building, they, um, you know, a football accident, a gymnastics accident, a stabbing, anything like that that can create damage and trauma to this hiatus, which would then make it more enlarged. And um, that would be the case of uh, a trauma-induced injury to the diaphragm. But for, like I was saying before, typically speaking, most people with hiatal hernias, what happens is intragastric pressure that pushes your stomach up against your diaphragm long-term over time repetitively. And the reason I say long-term over time repetitively is because these many different various forms of intragastric pressure, and there are many, um, they push the stomach up against the diaphragm 
repetitively over a long period of time. And so the stomach gets pushed up, gets pushed up, gets pushed up. And of course, it's going to seek out escape through that hole. It's going to eventually get pushed against that hole, through that hole, and, in, and, and into that hole. Um, and so what happens then is that hole becomes a little bit looser, a little bit wider, a little more dilated. Um, as we get older, it is a muscle. It can become more flabby, if you will, or weakened. And so that hole will just become looser and looser and looser. And as the pressure pushes on that stomach, it will be more able to go through and through and through. So this is what's typical with hiatal hernia. Of course, there are ex exceptions, but to say that you cannot reverse a hiatal hernia naturally is just not true. You can reverse a hiatal hernia naturally. And all that means is you're taking this, um, this stomach that has pushed through the diaphragm and you're moving it down to where it belongs, like in this picture, okay? So I'll draw a picture of a hiatal hernia. You guys have probably all seen, but just so you, again, so you can kind of see the difference. So, so here, so this is a normal stomach. So here you have, it's really bright today. Um, here you have the stomach. Now it's pushed through this hole. Okay, so again, the hiatus is this little hole that the esophagus goes through. Now your esophagus is way up here, and so is a portion of your stomach in your chest cavity. Okay, and so this is why we can have um, issues with breathing, because you have pressure on your lungs. We can have pressure on the heart. You know, you can feel like you're having a heart attack. This puts a lot of pressure on the vagus nerve, which can cause a whole number of different symptoms. So, so then if we can, if we can then move that stomach down, Okay, which is done through exercise and breathing, and it's also done by knowing what, what you are doing that pushes your stomach up and ceasing that. So understanding what you are doing today that creates intergastric pressure and, and addressing that. So that's number one in this comprehensive way of reversing your hiatal hernia. And by the way, whether you're doing this naturally or you're going to have surgery, you really should understand your condition and understand what's supporting your hiatal hernia, right? Because even if, um, oh my goodness, it's getting really funny lighting, but even if you're having surgery, um, if you still have those, those forces, that intragastric pressure that's pushing your stomach up, um, that can create a re-herniation after a, a surgical repair. That's why so many uh, hiatal hernia surgeries are temporary and they fail eventually. <laughs> I apologize for the lighting. Okay, so this might be a bit of an issue since I'm gonna do a demonstration. It's getting a little bit dark. I'm gonna open this curtain up a little bit and see if that helps. <laughs> I don't know, that just made it worse. I know, I'll close the curtain and see if that helps. Turn the light on. Okay, that's better. Thank you for bearing with me. Uh, okay, so in the case of this client, she's just started my protocol and she's saying that she's experiencing um, these different sensations of anxiety and nervousness and then pain at the solar plexus, which is right by the herniated site. So I just want to address that first and then we'll go into the demonstration. So one thing you have to understand with the hiatal hernia is that, um, excuse me, <laughs> is that your vagus nerve, which is a nerve that innervates uh, it's known as the wandering nerve and it innervates um, the heart and the lungs and the esophagus and the stomach and the liver and the, the spleen, most of our internal anatomy. So when I say innervate, that just means that it supplies nerve function to those organs. And so this nerve is connected to the heart, it's connected to the lungs, it's connected to the esophagus. In fact, it wraps kind of around the esophagus and it runs down the length of the stomach and it radiates out across the stomach. You guys can Google vagus nerve and see a picture of it for yourself. And then you'll begin to have a clear understanding as to why we can have symptoms like 
um, anxiety and heart palpitations and nervousness and panic attacks with hiatal hernia. So I have a new little prop here today. I just found this, um, what is this? This is Gorilla Tape. So I have a balloon here. And so this gives you another a kind of visual of your stomach lodged, obstructed in your diaphragm. So up here is the chest cavity. You have a portion of your stomach in your chest cavity and then the rest of your stomach hang out down here. And so when the food goes into the stomach up here, it then has to make its way down through the hiatus and into the stomach down here. And so this is why um, delayed stomach emptying can be a very common symptom of hiatal hernia. But getting back to the vagus nerve, um, we have this nerve that innervates the entire stomach. And so then if you go back, if you think back to, um, you know, if you think of this essentially being like a belt wrapped around your stomach and putting pressure on, on what? Putting pressure on your stomach, but also putting pressure on your vagus nerve then that can cause, um, it can really cause a variety of different symptoms, but heart palpitations, anxiety, and nervousness are um, just three of them, just to name a couple of them. Um, and so then when we begin to do these exercises, which are trying to do what? Which are attempting to move this stomach down and out of the herniated position, and we have this vagus nerve that's getting dragged through the diaphragm now that's creating additional friction and pressure on the vagus nerve and can activate those symptoms of nervousness and anxiety. Um, and then she complains also uh, of pain in the solar plexus. And that's just, you know, I'm gonna stand up just so that, because you can't see my solar plexus. So your solar plexus is here and many of the exercises that I teach involve the solar plexus. The hernia is just to the left, usually just under the left rib cage here. And so these tissues at the herniated site are going to be irritated, inflamed, and in pain um, simply from that friction of, you know, and not everybody has pain. I didn't have a whole lot of pain with my hiatal hernia. I did have pain. I had shooting, breathtaking pain <laughs> at times. Um, but some people have nagging, ongoing, inescapable pain, so it can be different for everybody. Um, but when we begin to move that stomach down, it's, it's, pulling, it's pulling it through and it can put additional friction on and pressure on that nerve as it pulls down. And so that's why it can cause those symptoms. And so I want to talk about what we can do um, to alleviate this a little bit. Um, so yeah, so I think that pretty much, I, I just kind of wanted to draw a picture there and help you understand um, why you might have um, some additional symptoms when you try these exercises. And by the way, the first, when I started developing this protocol, um, I was doing some exercises that I'd learned from different chiropractors and I was being very aggressive and it created a lot of additional pain and discomfort, a lot of additional symptoms and pain and discomfort. And so that's why what I recommend and what I teach is a protocol that is very gentle but consistent. So you do the exercises, commit to doing them daily, but do them gently. And so what I've told this person is to back off on the 10 exercise series that I teach. I teach a series of 10 exercises that help you master the ability to move that stomach down. Um, and by the way, earlier I was going through, I was saying that my, my, my protocol is comprehensive with three steps. The first one is, is education and understanding what's supporting and pushing your stomach up so you can address that, but it's also mastering the ability to move the stomach down. And then the third thing is mastering the ability to tighten that hiatus. So that hole in your diaphragm is supposed to be a tiny little tight hole like that with just enough room for your esophagus to come through. But when you have a, a hiatal hernia, it becomes, you know, enlarged. And so there are very specific exercises that you can do that will tighten and strengthen that hole to prevent future herniations without pushing your stomach up. So a lot of diaphragmatic breathing exercises, all the traditional ones, if you go and you Google it right now, the way that they instruct you to do those exercises actually supports pushing that stomach up, which is what we don't want, right? We want the stomach to move down. So the exercises that I teach that strengthen and tighten the hiatus also move the stomach down. Okay, so the demonstration. 
So um, what I want to show you is um, a very foundational exercise that I teach called baby's breath. And it's really not anything new, but it's very foundational to all of the exercises that I developed and used to reverse my hiatal hernia. Um, it's what you need to learn first, and it's what you need to ap apply with all of the other exercises. Um, and so what I recommended to this person is to go ahead and back off from the 10 exercise series and just focus on mastering baby's breath. For some people, that's all. They, they do the baby's breath and they get relief and they're fine. And anytime they get symptomatic, they practice baby's breath and they get relief and they're fine. Um, I would say those people probably have very small hiatal hernias or they probably have what I call a pre-hiatal hernia, which means their stomach is probably pressed up, just kind of pushing against the diaphragm, but not really pushing through the diaphragm. And it's not kind of made its home. A stomach will make its home in your diaphragm if it's been there long enough. So someone who has a small hiatal hernia, a pre-hiatal hernia, or a new hiatal hernia, sometimes all they need to do is practice baby's breath and they they get instant relief. And then they just implement that whenever they're symptomatic and the symptoms begin to um, become less and less frequent. So um, everyone is gonna be different. Everyone's hernia is different. So baby's breath. So let's talk about that first. The idea behind baby's breath is um, expanding the belly when you breathe, is relaxing while you breathe, and what this does is a couple of things. One is when we expand the belly while we breathe, it gives all of the organs in the abdominal cavity more room to not be so crowded and to not have so much pressure within that cavity. So remember, it's the intragastric pressure, um, ongoing, repetitive intragastric pressure, which by the way, one of the most common forms of intragastric pressure is bearing down to pass a bowel movement. So if that's something you do on a regular basis, that's pushing your stomach up, pushing your stomach up, pushing your stomach up repetitively, long-term, over time. So you kind of get the picture as to what I'm talking about. Things that we do, the support that cause or support a hiatal hernia. So we have to address the intragastric pressure. We have to understand what these forms of intragastric pressure are in our lives and address those. For me, I, I had several, I had several. Uh, hiatal hernias run in my family, which isn't a form of intragastric pressure, but it's a, one, of the, one of the things that put me at a higher risk for having a hiatal hernia. I had two pregnancies, same thing. Um, I did have trauma to my diaphragm when I was a child, but I didn't become symptomatic until I was like in my late 30s. Um, I had chronic sneezing, I had um, occasional constipation, I had, um, I wore tight clothing, and I constantly, and I'm still to this day trying to train myself to get over this, but I constantly was pulling in my abs, you know, like sucking in your gut, pulling in your gut. So all of these things contributed to intragastric pressure or contributed to a weakening of the hiatus. I also took asthma medications for several years, and if you haven't seen my video on that, go back and find it. It's very informational. Um, one of the medications, several of the medications I was taking for several years, I just come to find out here recently that they also cause um, muscles to become weakened and relaxed. Your skeletal muscle, known as the diaphragm, it's a muscle that hiatus become, become weakened and relaxed, and there are many studies that support um, this idea that these medications contribute to and cause GERD. Um, and many people who take these medications have GERD, or they're more likely to have GERD. Um, so I had a lot of different, I don't know if you want to call it risk factors or risk factors or contributors to my hiatal hernia. So it's really important that if there are things that you can address and change that will support that stomach to move down, that you do so. Okay, so getting back to baby's breath. Um, so when we, when we baby's breath, we expand our belly and we relax our abs. So that just creates less crowding and less pressure in the abdomen. So let me go ahead, I'm gonna stand up and demonstrate that just so you can see my stomach. So you just wanna play, you can stand while you do this. I think um, you could probably feel the expansion a little bit better when you stand. When you're sitting down, you're kind of folded over a little bit and it makes it a little bit harder. Um, you can lie down on your back if that's comfortable. Really just find a position that's comfortable for you. But if you place your hands right on your abdomen and you relax these muscles, like really just let them go. See how I've got kind of a little bit of a pot belly going there? I'm just really relaxing those muscles. 
Um, and if you're not sure, a lot of people say, I can't tell if I'm relaxing the muscles or not. Just um, imagine you're just letting your stomach go and letting it all hang out, and that will, re that will relax these abdominal muscles. For some people, simply doing this will ease their symptoms. Again, those people probably have smaller, newer hiatal hernias. But um, we relax the abdominal muscles. So this, just this alone is now relieving some of the pressure in the abdominal cavity. When we pull our abdominal muscles in, it increases the pressure. When we relax them, it decreases the pressure. So that's just going to give our stomach a little bit less pressure and able, let it just hang down through, through gravity. So now we want to take in a deep breath, and it doesn't have to be a strained, like laborious, aggressive deep breath, but just take in a deep breath and allow those stomach muscles to really expand and push on, and push on your hands and then exhale, and that's it. And so a few things you want to think about when you practice baby's breath is really relaxing. So think about your shoulders and your jaw and your abs and really just try to relax as much as possible. And the reason this is important is because this will... Um, this will contribute to your breaths becoming longer and slower. You don't want to force long, slow breaths. They will become longer and slower as you relax more and more and more. So really just look for tension anywhere in the body. A lot of times we carry it in our jaw. We clench our jaw, our shoulders and neck. So just really relax that. And especially you want to really look, examine, search for tension in the abs and let that go. That's really, really important. So let's just try a couple of breaths. So relax the abdominal muscles, and it, it, it also helps to kind of just scratch the muscles. That will help them kind of release any tension. Seems kind of silly, but it does. It's just like, you know, massaging tense, tense muscles will release that tension. So breathe in and use these abdominal muscles to push your hands outward and breathe out and breathe in and breathe out, looking for tension and really letting it go on the exhale, just releasing, releasing and letting go. Breathe in, expand the abs and breathe out, releasing tension. And so at never at any time do you wanna pull those abdominal muscles back in. So this is a teaching you'll see a lot where they'll say to breathe in and then exhale and pull those muscles back in. Don't do that. Don't pull your muscles back in. You wanna keep them as relaxed as possible so that stomach will slip down, slip down, slip down, slip down. And again, in the case of someone with an older, more established hiatal hernia, that's not gonna happen right away. It might take weeks or even months in order to really dislodge and reverse that hiatal hernia. Um, and there are, there are other exercises that help promote that, but this is foundational to all of those exercises. And it's really important to learn and it's really important to be able to do well. And it takes time and practice in order to get good at the baby's breath. So stick around. Up next, I am going to um, demonstrate um, that's baby's breath. So I want to just go a little bit deeper with this baby's breath. Um, there's an exercise that I teach and it's more of a diaphragm strengthening exercise. But I want to talk about it a little bit because... Um, when you do this particular exercise, the diaphragm is getting worked out. And every breath you, that you take, your diaphragm, it does what? It moves up and down, right? And so if you have a hiatal hernia, so if you imagine this is your stomach and it's lodged in your diaphragm, and so with every breath you take, your diaphragm's moving up and down, and you'll see that my hand, my, my stomach is moving up and down with my diaphragm, okay? But it's not supposed to, right? It's just your stomach's supposed to be down here and your diaphragm is supposed to do this. Okay, but with hiatal hernia, instead it's doing this. And so with this baby's breath, um, there's one thing that you can do that will help that diaphragm kind of gently push the stomach down, push the stomach down, push the stomach down, which is what we want, right? So this baby's breath is just an idea of decreasing the pressure so that the stomach can slip down on its own. But what I'm gonna show you next is actually involving the diaphragm so that it begins to kind of rock the stomach down with each breath, rock the stomach down, rock the stomach down, while strengthening that hiatus at the same time. So basically, coming back with your hands on your abdominal muscles, and same thing, baby's breath, we breathe in and we expand the belly. When we do that, I'm just gonna pause and talk for a moment. When we do that, our lungs are expanding with, with air, and our diaphragm has to do what? In order to make room for the lung expansion, it has to move 
down, okay? And so you can, you can put together this idea that if, you're, if your diaphragm is pushing down, that's pushing your stomach down and that's good. And then it's gonna move back up and it's gonna, if that's lodged in there well, it's gonna pull that stomach back up. But um, if, if we do, if we breathe in and we hold, the, the diaphragm is now pushing down and it's contracting in that position. Okay, which is how we work the diaphragm, and we always want to relax the abs uh, when we do this exercise. But if we practice this maybe five or six times, and you do want to be kind of careful, you don't want to, if you feel like you get lightheaded or dizzy, you want to stop, you make sure, make sure you're in a safe place, like you're seated or you're, you know, standing next to something you're holding on. Some people do get very dizzy from this. So it's basically relaxing the abs, breathing in, expanding the belly, and holding your breath and really getting in touch with your diaphragm and how it's contracting and pushing the stomach down. Okay, and then you exhale. And when you exhale, this is really important, you wanna fully exhale. Because the more you exhale, and what I mean by fully exhale is you breathe out, breathe out, breathe out, breathe out. And then when you think you have nothing left to breathe out, you breathe out a little bit more. So you breathe out all of that air and it never at any time do you pull your abs in. And so what that does is as you're breathing out, breathing out, breathing out, your diaphragm is coming up higher and higher and higher. As long as you're breathing out, it's rising up higher, okay? So, and, and that's what we want. We want that diaphragm to push the stomach down and we want it to rise up as high as it possibly can. So we're trying to create that separation. And again, for some people, they might get it in a minute and others it might take them six months. It's gonna be different for everybody. So one of the things I talk about in my course are the peritoneal adhesions, which is the, the mesentery that is known as the peritoneum that holds all of your organs in place within the abdominal cavity. And so that's why I say if you've got an older, more established hiatal hernia, it's made its home there, which means it's recreated new adhesions. That peritoneum has regrown, grabbed onto the walls, and created its new home there. And we can, we can stretch those adhesions and we can tear those adhesions. It's just like this slimy film that kind of holds everything in place and creates fr friction so that there isn't, you know, everything rubbing against each other. It's like a slimy film. They can be pulled, they can be stretched. Um, when they go in to do, if you can uh, pull up a, a video of a hiatal hernia surgical repair and you can see how they're cutting through all of that adhesion. Uh, to get to the stomach and able to pull it out of the diaphragm. So you can see what that looks like and get a better idea visually of what's happening internally when we're pulling that stomach down. And so essentially to unherniate a stomach, you know, we just, we just, we want to move it down there. You know, we starts with the baby's breath and then we can do other exercises where, where we're actually holding the stomach down and then we breathe and as the diaphragm comes up and down, Again, that stomach that's lodged in there, if we're holding that stomach down as the diaphragm is moving up and down, then it's gonna be more likely to become unobstructed. Um, so it's a variety of both breath work and um, physical manipulations that I teach with the hands. Um, so I hope that makes sense, and I hope this has helped somebody today. You can get more information at my website, pamfox.org. Um, where I talk a little bit more in depth about, um, well, really I just share kind of the same information I did today. It's a comprehensive protocol of the three, the three different, you know, addressing what's causing it, addressing what's supporting it, mastering the ability to move it down, and then, and then learning those exercises that, that develop a stronger, tighter hiatus so that it can't re-herniate. And that's how you reverse a hiatal hernia naturally. Um, so it can be done, it's being done every day. This back here is a wall of different comments and notes. Um, I have a bunch on here um, from people who um, are getting success with either having reversed their hiatal hernias or getting relief from their symptoms and are on, um, on track to reverse their hiatal hernia. If you didn't see my wonderful video that I did um, last week, uh, check it out on my blog at pamfox.org. It's called, I Received Diagnostic Proof of a Reverse Tidal Hernia, where one of my, he's not even actually one of my clients, he's just someone that follows me on YouTube and has um, gleaned information from all of the videos that I've shared on there for free. And he actually went in and had a, an, another endoscopy done. I think it's the third one he's had done and his doctor was, uh, shocked because his her hiatal hernia 
is gone. And so um, he's been doing my exercises. He's taken into um, consideration some of my dietary um, recommendations, not all of them, but um, it's been enough. It's been enough. And it's going to be different for everybody. What will work for one person? You know, some people need a lot of support when it comes to healing because they're very, very sick and others just need a little bit of support because they're mildly sick. So it's going to be different for everybody. So, all right, everyone, I thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.